Okay, because there are probably going to be a lot of bored children at home, I thought I might do a few clips to keep the kids amused. Um, I'm going to start with a little painting of a flamingo. So the materials that you're going to need for this, you're obviously going to need some paper. Uh, you're going to need some brushes and I'll show you, I'll explain to you why I'm using the brushes that I'm using when I get to it. Um, a pencil, an eraser, uh, a fine liner if you've got one or a black pen. You can use pencil, it doesn't really matter, but you've probably got a black pen kicking around somewhere. I'm also going to use a couple of coloured pencils and paint. Oh, move that out of the way. Now, you might not have paint in tubes. If you do, what I'm going to be using for this is permanent rose, indigo and yellow ochre. But that's pretty much just pink, black or blue, black, black is fine. And this is a bit of a dirty yellow, a bit of a mustardy yellow. That's all you need. So you've probably got a little paint set with little dried um, bits of paint in there. That's completely fine. If you've got tubes, um, then you'll need obviously a palette to squeeze out the paint into. And you'll need a nice tub of clean, I think that's clean, yep, clean water to start with. All right, now when I'm um, starting to paint or starting to draw, I don't think right now I'm painting or drawing a flamingo. I think what shapes am I painting? So for the flamingo, um, five shapes probably in this. So first shape is gonna be, maybe think of an Easter egg and it's fallen over a little bit. Um, so a bit of an oval. The second shape that I'm going to use is just a big S, that's all. The third shape is a, um, a chat bubble, you know, like you see in a comic, so a speech bubble. I'm going to have a straight line in there somewhere. And the last shape that's slightly trickier is I'm going to have a really fat boomerang. So uh, something like that, and we'll fiddle with that. Now, how does that come in to be a flamingo? So if I show you here, we're gonna start with, oh, that paper's a bit dirty. Mm, that's all right, we can go with that. Okay, so we've got, got my bit of an Easter egg. Yeah, then I'm gonna start with, um, next shape I'll draw is, sorry, I'm just trying to turn my screen back on. Um, the next shape that I'm gonna draw is an S. So I'm gonna start at the base of that Easter egg and I'm going to draw myself a nice S. Then I'm going to put in that uh, speech bubble. So I'm going to start here and pop that in. I'm going to give myself a bit of a leg with just a straight line. Then I'm going to come up and do the boomerang. And this one's slightly, slightly fiddly, fiddly. So here I'm going to come, come to about uh, maybe one third in from the edge here. And I'm going to start and draw this sort of boomerang shape. Now that's the shape of the beak. But the reason I've done it as a boomerang is because a flamingo beak is a really weird shape. And when you try and draw it, you can your eyes can play tricks on you. It's going to be a bit hard to figure out what the shape actually is. So I think it's easier to just do that. But now we have to rub out some of those lines. So I'm going to rub out the one here that's the front of that Easter egg shape. I'm also going to decide that I'm gonna rub out this line here on the boomerang and I'm gonna draw a slightly different one to come up, make a little bit of a circle for the eye. So I've sort of drawn a bit over that. I've altered that boomerang shape a bit and then I'm gonna bring that down there. So I don't know whether I'll have to watch the video and see if you can actually see what I'm doing, but that's not too many lines. I'm just trying to rub out so I can actually see what I've left there. So that's, that's our basic flamingo shape. So if you can, my, my original boomerang shape came in there and I've just pushed this line up, given that this little, like the end of a dummy here, that shape circle there, because I'm gonna put the eye in there and brought that in. Now I'm gonna leave these pencil lines pretty dark so that you can see what I'm doing. But if you were gonna paint it for yourself, just try and rub, put your eraser over it, make them a little bit lighter so that you don't have lots and lots of dark lines in your actual painting. All right, so now we're ready to paint. Really simple painting now. The hardest bit is that, is drawing that beak shape in. It might take you a few goes to get that right. Now I've got in here um, some 
permanent rose paint. I might just squeeze out a little bit more. You'll just have to add more water into your, if you've got a little dried up palette, just add some water into that and get the paint um, into a bit of a mix. So I've got some paint there. I'm gonna take, oh, now that's what I didn't show you. Here we go, the brushes. So I'm using three different brushes. The reason for that being, they all do slightly different things. So although this looks like it comes to a really fine point, when I wet that, the shape that this one makes, it's a round brush, is quite, it's quite blunt there at the end. I can get nice round shapes. You can see when I push that brush out, I can get, get a bit of a circle in there if I want. This brush actually gives me a nice point. So in this case, it gives me this sharp bit here, which would actually be really good for the flamingo feathers. So I'm gonna use this brush with the round end for the head and a bit of the body. I'm gonna use this brush for the tail of the flamingo. This one, the smaller brush, is just for, I can do smaller lines with that. So I can fill in shapes and muck around with that. Um, it doesn't matter what brand of brush you have, it's really just about the shape. So uh, a round, a pointy and a small brush. If you don't have that, work with what you've got. Right, so let's get some paint onto here. I'm gonna take this round brush and I'm gonna start in the head. I'm gonna put, I don't know if you can see that from here. I'm gonna get some water in there. So I've got a fairly thick mix of paint because watercolor always dries lighter than it appears when you first put it on. So this is gonna look really bright, but it will dry a lot lighter. So I'm gonna start in the middle of that shape and just put a big blodge of paint on. Now I'm not yet worried about the edges because I'm gonna swap then, while I've still got lots of water, I'm gonna swap then to this little brush and that lets me get in and around those shapes because if I tried to do that with um, this bigger brush, I'd just make a mess and go over the edges. Right, so that's all still very wet, lots of water in the page. So then I'm going to take, I'm going to put the, dip my brush in the water again, get a bit more water, a bit more paint. Now I'm going to do this S shape. So when you do this, start in the back of the head, come down and see if you can get it all in one hit. I'm going to get some more paint, going to the curve of the body, and I'm going to put a few strokes in here, but I'm going to leave a few little bits of paper. I don't have to paint that whole shape in. You can if you want, but I don't need to. Then I'm going to switch to that pointy brush, pick up some more paint and put in those little sharp feathers. Then I'm going to come and fix my, not mistakes, but fix up some little bits. So I can see here, now what, what you need to be careful of, there's a lot of water on the page already. So I don't, I need a dry brush. I've, so I've, um, actually that's one thing I didn't tell you that you'd need, some tissues, if you can buy them at the moment. So I'm just gonna take the excess moisture off my brush, it's a clean brush. Then I'm gonna come and tidy up that shape, just using the paint that's already in the page and on the paper. And I might just tidy up this bit there too. Now, if this brush, if I came onto this page and this brush had a lot of water in it, it would push all that pigment out and I get a white spot. So I have to be careful that this brush is nice and dry and I'm using the water that's in the page. Now I'm also gonna put in a leg, not putting in a foot, so he's gonna be standing in water. So now I've got that brush that's got the um, sharp point and I'm gonna put him in some water. So I'm gonna try and get some cleanish water. I'm gonna start underneath the bird with clean water. This is, well, it's pinkish water, but I'm coming up here. You can put color in the water if you want. I'm just gonna keep it simple. And I touch the bottom of his foot of his leg rather. And you can see that that's now just starting to run into there. If you want a bit more, um, a stronger line, you can just, I'm just picking up a little bit more paint and I can put some so that you get this effect of a little reflection in the water. Then you absolutely have to not touch that. So leave that alone. I've got that little blip there. And I can see at the moment, I can see my pencil lines under there because I left them, I didn't want to, um get rid of them. Now I can see that I've got the water that's run down here is now this bit's drier and this water here is pushing back into the paint. 
but that's okay because it will give me this interesting effects in there so I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to leave it then I'm going to look at the beak so for the beak I'm going to use what am I going to use I'm going to get some yellow ochre which or just a yellow a, a palish yellow don't go too hard on it you don't want very much um, oh, on my fingers now I could probably just use what's on there ah, messy right so I'm just gonna get a little bit of um, yellow paint and put a little bit there I'm washing my brush drying off the excess because I put quite a bit of water on that I'm gonna come up to where its eye is and again you can see all my pencil lines that they're quite messy so they're hard to rub off actually the pencil is hard to rub off once uh, under this yellow color so do um, be a bit tidy with your lines now each what I'm doing I put that yellow on I'm cleaning my brush and then I'm just dragging it down a little bit and I'm now effectively painting with water because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of my black paint my indigo so blacky blue paint in there so I've got this darker yellow it's fading down to here and what it means is that I can then pick up I've got some indigo paint here I can just drop it in that bit and the water will take that up a little bit now that might dry too light but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment because I'm, I'm going to let it see what it does let it dry and then when it's all dry, if it's too um, too pale, I can just go back when everything's dry and paint over it again and make it darker. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, pencil. So because I've done this, it's not very big. So I want to put, they've got this funny limey green color in their eye, um, sometimes depending on what one you're looking at. So rather than trying to use paint in there, because if I get water in there, it's going to do strange things. Sort of like this. This water's wicking up to this dry bit and I'm getting that little mark, but I don't really mind that. Do I? Maybe I do mind that. Let me just dry my brush and see if I can just... I'm just softening. So with a dry... I've cleaned my brush, dried it off, and I'm just touching it to that funny line that I was getting. Because, and the reason I'm getting that is because this has dried and the water from here is wicking up into that dry bit. So I might wick off some of that water down there. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pencil and I'm gonna cheat. I'm just gonna draw myself a little circle in, in here for the eye. Then I'm gonna cheat even some more. I'm gonna take a black fine liner and just do a little pupil in there because I don't want to trying to get a little dot in something that small is a little bit tricky now I'm not sure if I'm going to be dry enough yet but the reason I've got this pink pencil is so I can come and tidy up some of these shapes without having to worry about putting more water in and making things run so I've just made that a bit tidier that edge there and that's probably about Oh, so what you should be able to see is that the pink from here is running down into the water. Um, this pencil looks a bit heavy there, so I, I'll wait till that dries and then um, try and see if it needs any more colour on that beak. And again, I'm still, the water's still dry. I've just cleaned and dried the brush and I'm just making that settle down. But what I haven't done I haven't gone back into any of these areas and I haven't really mucked, I haven't touched the water. If you want to strengthen that, wait until it's completely dry, come back and wet it again and then you can put your, your pink down again. Try not to do it at this stage because it's not quite dry but not really wet enough. And if you're trying to test whether your paint's dry, don't use the top of your finger because that's quite um, oily greasy dirty mine particularly at the moment use the back of the finger because there's less oil on your finger and you won't leave marks on your painting and grot on your painting i might just put i wonder you can play with this and see what you want to do but i might put a little bit of pink in the beak hmm. maybe maybe i don't like that if i don't like that i'm just going to get my brush and soften that in. and that's that's 
pretty much. Oh, actually, what I might do, if you, some of you, it depends whether you've got your own paints or whether you're rating your parents' paints. If you're lucky, your mum or dad might have a tube of white gouache. And what we can do is put a little highlight on that beak. So this is white paint. It's just a really solid paint. It's, it's not transparent like the watercolors. Actually, mine need a new tube. Mine's really thick. But what I can do is take a little bit and just put a bit of a highlight down, down the beak so it looks a little bit three-dimensional. So I don't really want to do anything more than that. That's just the basic shape of the flamingo. And what you can do is change, because you know that this shape is a, like that oval, that Easter egg, you can tilt that up and put the beak up that way and have a shallower, a, a more squashed in S, S so that the bird looks like it's looking up. You can bring that S shape down and make the neck sit down on the actual body. So you can do all sorts of things. If you just think to yourself, all it is is an S with an oval and a boomerang. And this is just your um, speech bubble. And that's all there is to it. So have a go. And if you do one that you like, post it. Well, if you do one, if you don't like, post it underneath and, and let, me see, let me see how you've gone and whether um, it's been clear enough for you.